Hello everyone, I'm Animus J, and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today we are going to learn how to make map art, and this is going to be for every single version of Minecraft. So this is the end product of what I made out of my map, and this is of course an actual map. I can pull it up and look at it, carry it around here, and I did put it on the cartography table in order to lock it, and we'll cover that as well in a minute. But we'll also discuss the difference and what is going on with these two partial maps and why I have those. Now, before we move on, I do want to say that it is important to watch every aspect, every moment of this video. And that's not just because I want you to watch my whole video. It's because there's going to be a lot of little things that are going to help you out and is going to resolve a lot of the questions that I usually end up getting down in the comments section as well. And speaking of which, there are going to be a lot of links in the description to the websites and resource packs and basically all of the things that I'm going to be showing you about how I went about this. Okay, so let's talk about your map area that you're going to be building in because how you're going to be building it kind of depends on what area you're going to be choosing. Because because I chose to do artwork like this with specific colors, essentially I ended up placing blocks in every single location of the map, which meant that it didn't matter where I made my map. Now, maybe you want a specific background or something, you may have to choose your map a little bit better. And by choose your map a little better, I, I mean choose your location a little bit better. So then if I open a map right here, let's look at this, okay? So I'm in the middle of my map. The map covers an area of 8 by 8 chunks, and each chunk is 16 blocks. So in Java Edition, if I press F3 and G, you can see these big squares coming up. And I'll show you Bedrock Edition players in just a second how you can do something similar to this. But if I look at my map right now, you can see my little setup area over here. But the thing is, your map is not going to necessarily set a specific location according to where you want it to be. It's going to set according to a predetermined code on where maps are in your world. So if I head over to this next area over and I open my map, now you can see we've got this big blank space to work with and down here at the bottom left is my starting point. So I'm gonna come to the very corner of this very chunk right here and place a block and you can see that little white pixel is the bottom right corner of my map. So here we are on Bedrock Edition, and I apologize if there's a difference in the audio. It's not actually because of Bedrock Edition. It's because I had to re-record just this little segment, and hopefully the audio matches up. But in any case, we are in the Redstone School map, and you can see all my Redstone stuff. And this is a great opportunity to talk about how the map actually opens. So it would be great if all of my redstone stuff could just open up and, and display right here, right? So if I open it up, you can see that no, actually it doesn't. And if you look at it, we're barely even inside the map. We're probably up there at the very top left corner from where we opened it because what's in the center of our map is actually this stuff right here. And so that's where choosing your map is going to be, well, you just got to kind of experiment it with it a little bit. So if we come out to out here, we should be okay to open up another one and have it not be overlapping any of my redstone stuff. Okay, so let's open this up. And I still didn't quite get it, but that's all right. I can still demonstrate the stuff that I wanted to show you guys. And if you see, we have all of these red lines on the ground. Now this is a texture pack and the link will be in the description to download either this one or one that's very similar to it. If I couldn't find this one, hopefully I can find it. But you can see we can use this just like on Java Edition to be able to find all of the bounds of our map. So I'm just about at the top left corner. If I put my map away and I look right here, this is the very corner of the chunk which means it's going to be the very corner of the map and sure enough you can see we got that little black pixel all the way at the top left and we can bring that out just make it a little bit bigger so that you guys can see it even better and 
There you go. Well, I guess green on green doesn't really show up, does it? All right, let's try that again with a different color. There you go. All right, sorry. I hate, I, I don't like the way these maps move. You, it's like you put it down, bring it up. It's kind of, I don't know, feels weird to me. Anyways, so what I recommend doing is you go around and use your map to find each of the corners. And remember that it is eight by eight chunks. So you can just count the eight. You can travel with your map, whatever you want to do. But the best thing, in my opinion, is to go through and find each of the corners and go ahead and mark them out. But let's take a minute to talk about the location that you've chosen. If I choose this location and all I want to do is text with some kind of a plain background, you can see that I'm dealing with a green background right now because of the grass. And if you're on Bedrock Edition, you're also going to have to deal with biome colors on top of your grass that you're showing or whatever terrain you might have depending on where you've chosen. So with my corners so with my corners mapped out, I'm going to go ahead and press F3 and G again. There we go. And hide those bounding boxes or excuse me, hide the chunk borders. And now I have the area that I'm going to be working with in. But let's talk about choosing your location and how to make your background. If you need a background that's going to be a specific color, then it really doesn't matter where you're going to choose, does it? However, you can make it easier on yourself by choosing a desert background. Say you want sort of a script kind of a background, like a parchment paper, or the snow areas are really good for having white backgrounds because you can just clear out an area, make it flat, and wait for it to snow on top of those areas. One thing that you can do if you select the correct biome to make your map, which I clearly have not done, is you can put fences all around your map area one block out though, of course, because we want to cover the entire edge. So this is the last corner of my map, which means these fences will not be shown. But what you can do is you can place two snow blocks on the ground with a carved pumpkin on top scatter a bunch of these guys around and they will leave their snow trails over every block eventually just kind of afk there for however long it takes and allow these guys to scatter everywhere and cover the entire area with snow giving you a completely white background as i said though it is biome dependent and clearly i'm not in the correct biome because we're not leaving any kind of a snow trail are we now one thing you're going to want to do in regards to your map whether you're playing in survival or creative is you're going to want to mark which way is north so i'm going to go ahead and just do a little orange pillar right here that way is north and now if i come to the top left of my map we need to know where this is and that's because this point right here this white block so this point right here the top left of our map is our zero zero in regards to how we're going to lay our blocks and we'll cover more about this in just a second when we get into the program that we're going to be using. Now let's talk about all of these sheep that I have and cows and animals. If you're in creative mode, there's a couple commands that you can do to help you out. If you're in survival, you can probably just skip ahead, maybe one minute. It won't take long to talk about this. But if you are doing this in creative mode like I am, then you're going to want to do a couple of commands to make it easier on yourself. They're all going to be game rule for the most part. So you're going to type slash game rule. You can hit tab to autofill it, space, and then you can see this list. So the ones that I recommend doing is do daylight cycle false. That's going to make it so the sun is going to stay in the sky and it's not going to ever be nighttime. Then same thing, a game rule. And what you're going to want to do as well is you're going to want to do do mob spawning. And you're going to set that one to false. And that is going to get rid of all of your animals. Now, if you already have animals like I do. You... Okay, so I already killed my mobs and I'm going to tell you how to do it. But I want to prelude first. This command will kill literally everything in your world. Okay, everything. The only thing that will not die is you. The way you do it is you're going to type slash kill at E, open bracket, type equals not, which is the exclamation point, player, and then close your bracket. Hit enter, and as I said, that will kill literally everything except for you. 
Another command you're going to want to do is a game rule do weather cycle. You're going to set that one to false as well. That's going to ensure that you have no weather ruining your fun. So then with the sun permanently in the sky, we're not going to get any mob spawns. And with no weather, we don't have to worry about that nuisance. And without any animals spawning, we won't have them in the way either. Anybody who's in creative mode, you're ready to go. If you are in survival mode, you can't do all of those fancy things. So make sure you have a bed and make sure you set your spawn. What I recommend doing is having an area where you have all of your chests with all of your materials built up so that you can set that as your space, basically your little base. Another thing to have is an ender chest for all the important things that you probably forgot. And set your spawn, set your spawn, set your spawn. Okay, that being said, you also need to light up this little area just in case you don't really want to light this area up because what's going to happen is you have to break all the lighting that you're going to be doing. So the idea is the moment the sun starts setting, you're going to run over to your bed and you're going to go to sleep. Now then, with all of the boring stuff out of the way, let's get into our actual artwork. Here is the artwork that I did. It is the Phoenix logo that I use for all of my Minecraft YouTube stuff. So if you have an image that you already want to use, then you're one step ahead in a sense. But if you're going to custom create your artwork, say you want to do a sign that has some lettering on it, what I recommend doing a great free program for pixel art is this one right here, and it is pixelart.com. Now here's some hashtag spoilers for JWorld. This is a sign that I've been working on, and the reason pixel art is so great is because it lets you paint pixel by pixel. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to create a new piece of art and then what you need to do is for the size of your artwork you need it to be 128 by 128 and the reason for that is as I mentioned our map size is 8 chunks by 8 chunks at 16 blocks each equals guess what 128 which means that every single little pixel you draw is one single block in your world. Easy peasy, right? Now, once you've finished doing up your artwork here on pixel art, what you can do is you can go ahead and you can download it and little pro tip, you can save it as a pixel file to upload it later on and edit it if you need to leave. So you can download your file or otherwise, if you have another file that you need, that you are wanting to make, then you can start with that one. If you're starting with a custom piece of art like I have right here, there's something you need to look at. So remember our pixel art was already 128 by 128. We started with that template, which meant it was going to fit. My little Phoenix logo right here though, if you look at it, is 800 by 800. And that's just not going to fit, is it? So we need to shrink this down. That's easy enough. All I got to do is open up Microsoft Paint, drag my icon into there, and then all I got to do is click on Resize right here, go to Pixels, and go to 128 by 128. Hit OK, and bam, there we go. Now we have our artwork at 128, 128, and because we went from bigger to smaller, it still looks pretty clean for the most part. Once we zoom in, it does get a little bit blurry, and you are going to want to try and clear those up a little bit if you can. For example, these spots right here, this line that I'm centered on right here, we just want to make that most likely be red background and I'll show you why that's so important here in a second. So I've gone ahead and I have saved this as 128 Phoenix from Paint, this file right here. And I did not clean it up and this is where you guys are going to learn from my mistakes. So if I zoom in on this, you can see it still has kind of the blurry pixelish stuff going on. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to download this program. 
and it is called SpriteCraft, and the link is down in the description. Once you open up SpriteCraft, you're gonna come to this screen right here, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit Browse, and then you're gonna go to that 128 by 128 picture that you've created, whether it was from pixel art, or you customized your artwork down to 128, and you're gonna hit Open. Now, it's loaded it up right here. Now here, this is very important, guys. You're gonna click on Options, and you're gonna click on the blocks that you want to be using in your artwork. Now, I'm not going to click this, and I'm gonna show you why it's so important to do it, okay? So I have all blocks selected at the moment, and then I'm gonna create my Minecraft Blueprint. This thing is a mess, and that's because I didn't limit the blocks to use. For some reason, this thing tries to blend the colors in. I think the blending works a bit better on Bedrock than what it does on Java Edition because of the way the maps are created, but overall, this is just not what we want, okay? And you can see when I was talking about blending and fixing those areas, this is that top bar that I was talking about. By the program looked at that top line saw that it was a blurred red and said okay that looks pink to me let's make it pink it's obviously not pink and we don't want it to be pink and going back to that first map that I had showed you guys you can see where I started filling it out this way and how it looked on our map in the end now another thing about your block selection and you're gonna see this in my timeline is this right here what happens when you put TNT next to redstone it blows up guys <laughs> so yes limit your blocks if I go to the options and then I you can just unselect everything and that'll get rid of everything for you and then if you only want certain things for example if I only wanted to use concrete in my build then I can do that hit close and then create my blueprint and it's only going to use concrete. Now again, we're dealing with the pixel issue that it keeps thinking I have pink all over the place and I don't. It also keeps thinking that I have orange all over the place and that's because of the color of red that I chose for my background. So instead what I can do is I can go back and I can narrow it even further to only use red concrete and to only use the white concrete as well. So there's white concrete and red concrete was right above it. So then I load that up and you can see still it's done some weird stuff and that's because it was a little pixelated when I loaded in my picture. That's the importance of cleaning up your picture. But as we look at the top left corner, the reason I had talked about the zero zero is you can see right here block chords one one. OK, now if I come down here and I click on show grid, now it's got the outline for every single block. And so what I can do is I can hover my mouse over this one one two one three one four one. Same thing going down, we have one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. And this is how you're going to fill it in. So if I wanted to start the tip of the wing, I can see that that's six, one, which means I would go into my world and I would count over one, two, three, four, five, six, place a white concrete block, one below it, one, and then go over, and then three, and then so on. So the first thing I did is I went around and I did the outline of the entire box so I knew what my bounding area was, but this actually screwed me up a little bit because then I didn't count the frame, but the frame that I did does actually count. So for example, that far left line is actually block one of my vertical column, but I was counting it as a zero. So then when I was going into the right from the left side to place my white blocks, I was off by one at first because I was counting like I said, the frame as a zero when it actually counted as a one. Then I ended up having to go back and replace all of the pink blocks because I realized on my map it wasn't showing up the way that it was supposed to be showing up. In Bedrock, it may actually show up a little bit better because the colors do blend a lot stronger on Bedrock than what they do on Java Edition. So I recommend playing with it a little bit before you commit to doing the entire map. You can, of course, check the map anytime that you want. 
Now, another problem that I ran into was that I got off in one single spot in how I was counting. I was having trouble going back and forth between the map and my Minecraft world. So what I ended up doing was actually using a dry erase marker on my monitor. I have a second monitor where I had this all mapped out. It might be easier for you to maybe print out your graph. That might be an easy way for you to do it and then just check off each box as you as you go through but I found that using the dry erase marker on each of the screen blocks was the easiest for me to do and then what I would do is every so often I would just go back and check that I was in the right place so for example if I was 50 right and 26 down on my screen I would just go into my Minecraft world and count those blocks out and make sure that I was in the same place in the world so you can see that outlining actually worked really well for me because then I could go back and just fill everything in if you're using text you definitely want to go through and outline all of the text first make sure everything looks good before filling it all in but depending on what your map is, just use your better judgment. Chances are you know the easiest way to go about creating your map according to what your artwork is. So I really hope that all of this helps you guys out and hopefully you have all the tools that you need in order to get started. Understand it is a very large undertaking. Even in creative mode, this took me several hours. I think the entire map in creative mode with only the two colors took me right about three hours in total to make. So yeah, in creative mode, you obviously have infinite blocks in survival mode. You're gonna have to go around and gather all those blocks. And especially if you're dealing with multiple colors or even if you're scaling your map to be even larger to blend the colors even more, that's a very massive undertaking and it's thousands and thousands of blocks. And that's a great thing about the program that I showed you guys is it'll actually show you how many of each block that you're going to be using, which is wonderful for gathering all of your resources. But anyways, that is it for today, guys. I'm Animus J. Make sure you hit that like button. And if you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.